Derivative itself, what's the significance if you think about the derivative graph? What's the significance of the turning point to the derivative? Let me tell you what that actually means. If I could plot it decently, if this was actually right, then in here, like that, and suppose that this was here and like that, if my graph was right, those would give me what are called points of inflection. So, Let me try to explain to you what I mean. Um, so the places where the derivative has a turning point are places where the graph changes from being what's called concave up to concave down. What, so what, what's concave up and concave down is obviously the question. Let's see here. So concave, let me just concave up is something that looks like this. Concave down is something that looks, roughly speaking, like that. How can you tell whether something's concave up or concave down? More specifically, if you draw the secant line, see if this is the graph of a function, if you, if you draw the secant line between two points, and the graph of the function is always below the secant line, it's concave up. On the other hand, if you draw the secant line between two points, and the function is always above the secant line, then the function is said to be concave down. I know sometimes it's kind of hard to see whether, I, but I'll say intuitively speaking, concave up is like, um, like bowl-shaped, and whereas concave down is kind of like hill-shaped, I don't know, <laughs> upside down bowl-shaped, I don't know. But, um, so wh what I'm saying here is if you, really, if you could really see this, you could see that the graph I'm about to do in purple is, is concave up, and so is it over here. But in the middle, between these two points of inflection, it's concave down. So let me, let me draw it in red for a second here. So it'd be concave down here. So concave, concave down, concave up. How would you find the points of inflection? Yeah, we, for concavity, we study the second derivative. G, G prime prime of x. So what's G prime prime of x here? Mm-hmm. Minus four. Hey, that's nice. That's that's four times three x squared minus one. I mean, it's not super nice. This ha where is this zero? Plus or minus one over the square root of three actually is where that's zero. So the points of inflection. They're at x equals to one over the square root of three. And uh, I mean, plus, or, plus or minus 1 over the square root of 3. If I, if I draw the graph of the g prime prime of x, there are you know, minus 1 over root 3 tick mark, 1 over root 3 tick mark. And where g prime prime, so then this is a uh, upward opening parabola. So the sign chart looks like this. for G, the g prime prime sign chart. So the, oh, I said f here. Guys, you should have corrected me. This was what? That was g, yeah. So right here, this means it's concave up. Here, this tells me concave down. This tells me concave up again. Just like this one told me decreasing increasing, decreasing, increasing. So the calculus test for concave up is that g prime prime of x is greater than 0. The con ca calculus test for concave down is g prime prime of x is less than 0. 
Simple as that. A place where you change from concave up to concave down is called a point of inflection. Yeah? Did you say that the negative thing is a negative one if it's concave up, and, but it has negative signs over on the chart? Con concave up, concave up, concave up. Oh, just the concave down? Concave down, and I just figured out that this is x equals to 1 over the square root of 3, and this is x equals to minus 1 over the square root of 3, those dotted lines where we change concavity. Okay. What I'm doing right now is actually a section 4.3 example where we combine all the concepts together. All right. It's all her fault. It's a good thing, though. We should, th this is a big picture thing. You really do need to see it all put together. But there are specific subtasks that we ask you. Find where the function's increasing, right? Or find where it's concave up. Find where it's concave down. So you're not finding concave down as a derivative because function has no function. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was talking about the original function. Yeah. <laughs> Can you find where the derivative is concave up or concave down? Of course. You would look at the third derivative. Indeed. Now, there's another question you guys should have asked me that is important to ask. Is, uh, so far, my examples are somewhat misleading. Every single time that we've had a critical point, it's been a relative min or a max. That doesn't have to happen. OK, let me, let me show, you, show you an example. Uh, and, uh, can I erase? Did we get all of this? We're good? Have you, you gotten everything? Good? OK. So I'll keep it easy. How about this? f of x equals to x cubed um, plus x. So what's f prime of x? Oh, I did a bad thing. Well, it's, it's a good thing. I'll leave it. So what are the critical points? In other words, so critical points. Questions. Does f prime of x exist? That's one question. Question two, is it 0? You know, you need one of those. If, if, if you have, it doesn't exist some point, that could be a critical point. Uh, if it's 0, it's a critical point. Can this be 0? No. I have 3 times something squared plus something. I mean, this is positive plus positive equals 0. To quote my community college professor, this dog will not hunt. Um, you know, no. No solution. No critical points. What does that mean? In fact, that means that f prime of x is greater than 0 for all x. In other words, this function is always increasing. Yeah. But if you look at f prime prime of x, what do you get? 6x. So if you draw the sign chart for f prime prime of x, you've got 1, you got 0. And so apparently it's concave down. And uh, it's concave down for negative x. It's concave up for uh, positive x. And um, so I can sketch the graph. By the way, this has zeros where? At 0. 0 is the only 0. Because x, square, x, x squared plus 1 is never 0. It's an ir irreducible quadratic. And apparently, it's concave down. Yoop. And then concave up. So 
So it shifts from being, you know, concave down shaped over here to being concave up shaped over here like that. Always increasing, no critical point. Yes. Oh, is that it? Oh, okay, good. What happens if I get rid of the X? Oh, before I forget. Before I forget. Here's my go-to example of a critical point which doesn't exist. Something like this. Whoop. So this would be like y is equal to absolute value of x minus 1. There's the graph of it. I just threw in the graph for free. So if this is f of x, then f prime of 1 does not exist. And so x equal, well, let's say 1 comma 0 is a critical point. So I mean, in general, you got to look out for that. I don't think the examples that we ask you about in your homework have that. So it's not a, if, if, if there's not examples like this in your homework, it's probably not on the test either. But it, logically, we should talk about that. So sorry if I'm being logical. I'll stop soon. OK, so f of x equals to x cubed is my next example. Again, I want to see where is it increasing, where is it decreasing? Concavity. So f prime of x is what? 3x squared. Aha. So this time, we have x equals to 0 as critical point, right? So if I make my sign chart, I've got 0 as a critical point. And this is interesting in the sense that we haven't seen this yet today. Here, the critical point, we don't switch from positive to negative, right? It bounces because it's an x squared, not an x, basically. See, that x squared makes it stay positive, stays positive like that. And that's an example of a critical point which is not a relative maximum or a relative minimum. See, it doesn't go from increasing to decreasing. It goes from increasing to increasing, <laughs> right? So f of 0 is not a, is not a, um, not a maximum. And so, well, what's f prime prime? f prime prime of x is equal to 6x again, right? So my sin, f prime prime of x sign chart is just like the one we just did a second ago. It's minus plus. So it just so happens. And this is just a, a, a quinky dink, uh, a coincidence, if you will. It so happens that the, um, the critical point here is also an inflection point. It doesn't have to happen. Um, there are critical points which are neither minimums nor maximums nor inflection points. They're just, well, we call them saddle points. But So the graph of x cubed, you know it, you love it. It's like this. And so that point right there is a critical point and an inflection point. It's critical because if I drew this right, the, um, it, it, it comes through the origin with a tangent line with slope 0. The difference with this previous graph is that this one, when you get to the origin, it has a, a tangent line of slope 1. See the difference? That's why this is a critical point, whereas that was just an inflection point. Yeah? I think most things here pass the horizontal line test, except for this one. We I mean, talk about horizontal line tests when we're thinking about injectivity of a function. Um, Do we ever talk about the horizontal line test in here? It's definitely true that locally, if you have the derivatives positive or negative, it's going to pass the horizontal line test if you like restrict down. So places where it's going to fail the horizontal line test are precisely those places where you have relative maximums or minimums, places where it changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. But I'm not sure why you're asking me about that right now. Oh, have a good weekend. Thank you. Stay dry, my friends. Yeah, you can hit it off. Yeah.